Okay. okay. So, <laughs> thanks for your time. Um, just for the recording, for the sake of recording, we are going to do um, mining site mapping in the Hanoi province. I will start sharing my screen now. Um, and I will start from the beginning. Um, can you please confirm me that you are seeing my screen? Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Can you see the Google window? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, the beginning is finding the data. Um, the best website for me, uh, um, literally, it's quite easy. Um, there are multiple sources for this. Uh, I prefer Earth Explorer. Um, so it's the website from the U United States Geological Survey. Um, so you could see Earth Explorer dot usgs.gov. Um, once we click on it, um, of course you have to register. It will probably take one yeah. day. I'm not sure if it's immediate or not. But you will see here login. Okay. Login. Yes. Um, don't worry if I go too fast because I will send you the record. Yeah. Um, as you can see, I already have my credential. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they bring you to yeah, 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 yeah. So we have to go now. So here is a catalog for any type of satellite data, not just the one we are going to download. I will show you which one. Um, okay, so first things is I haven't clicked on anything. Now, as soon as I start clicking, I'm going to define the area of interest. Okay, you see. It doesn't matter if it um, doesn't need to be so accurate because the satellite is, uh, footprint is quite big. Okay. I define the area of interest, but you could also eventually upload here. These are all the coordinates of the point I define it on the map. But if you want, um, you can upload an area. Um, you see here, you can select a KMZ or also a ship file. But it's quite easy. Um, so either way, um, second thing after we define the area of interest, if you scroll down, you will see this match. Okay, we are going to download Sentinel-2 data, and this satellite data is available since 2015. Um, so we, of course, we can go back. Uh, th theoretically, even uh, to the 18th century, but there is no data, don't worry. Uh, I will just go on 2015. I will take just 1st of January. Um, and yeah, I will just do a 2015 search because I've already done for 2020, I will I send you the data. So let's do a search from the 1st of January 2015 to uh 31st of december um 2015 now we define the area of interest the time range if we go on data set um we can select the sensor uh for our case is the best uh free data multi-spectral data in the world for so its sentinel true data you see here as soon as you click, they will essentially tell you that this data belong to the European Space Agency, but uh, you can use so do anything you want with it. Of course, as long as we acknowledge. So don't worry, this is just a disclaimer. Uh, so we can now, you see, we can now click already on the results. Another filter we can do, additional criteria, is what I prefer to do is essentially limit to anything less than 10% of land cover, of, uh, sorry, cloud cover. Um, because otherwise we will get hundreds of image, most of them useless. Um, and now you start to see on the left, all these available images. Um, don't worry, as I told you, I will share the presentation, okay? Um, and now uh, the good thing is, um, essentially it's a big area and each of these Sentinel-2 image has a footprint of 100 by 100 kilometers, it's a square. You could see the footprint. You see here, you have a foot. 
and you can see, so for example, you have this image that cover partially uh, no, it's still in the area of interest in this red polygon I draw, but it's not enough. Um, and you can see, uh, you click here again, you have another image. This is 1st of December. Um, uh, these are two different levels. Uh, don't worry. Um, essentially, we are going to use this level one image, which is the um, data uh, containing uh, top of atmosphere data. These are operational. These are the first type of image uh, we could find from the European Space Agency because essentially they were testing the satellite. Um, and they are quite common in 2015. They don't appear anymore. So we are going to work just with this level 1C data. And you could see you have like different data. Um, some of them, they cover just the southern parts. Um, but for example, we have for its UTSO, you see now. So we need to cover the whole Hanoi province, two images. Okay. Um, I will, and once we are happy, we can eventually click here. We can have a preview. Uh, you could see that uh, this image, for example, uh, there is quite a good uh, cloud cover. Even if um, this is the Hanoi province, so it's quite good for this area. Um, another thing is, if you want, you can check already the cloud cover. So it's 9.9%. Um, I will not use it if we, for example, when we have done the land cover mapping for Hanoi, we have been quite strict. So we have used everything below 2%, probably. Uh, by this case, um, it should be enough for uh, mapping mining site. So, um, and of course I took two image acquired uh, at the same time, so the same day, uh, just to cover consistently this area. Once we are happy, you see there is this download option here and we can start downloading. There are two options. This is essentially like an image um, for resolution browser. Um, we don't need this because this doesn't contain all the bands we need. It's this one we need, the larger product, this level 1C tile. Hmm. So I'll start the loading and it should start doing it. Um, we can download also multiple products. So I will now go on the second one. Uh, and start downloading it. Again, we have two options. We will download the one. It's easy to understand because we we take the largest one, 600 megabyte. These are zip file. Um, don't know why. Um, it's so slow. Oh, I hope. Um, Okay, so this website, I don't know, is giving issue. Um, we can try. So we have also another option. It usually works. So it could be just the, uh, the load speed is quite bad. Uh, but we can try another site. Um, it's called um, Sentinel Data. Hub. So this is actually um, another website. Ah, okay, it's working. So you see. Okay, finally. Um, yeah, it takes. It depends, of course, from the connection. Um, doesn't take usually so long. It's just I don't know why it's so slow today. Um, but, okay, uh, I have some, I, I should have already some image uh, we can use as a training. Uh, let me see. Um, I think. 
can use this image. Yeah, this should work. So I have two images. They belong to 2018, okay? But just to give you an example, I will copy on the desktop. Um, so each of these images you can see are like five, 600 megabytes in size, but of course they are zip file. So once you will download, you see 600 megabyte in this case, they are actually, I think, around one gigabyte in size. So, for example, when we um, have have done uh, for a Noida land cover map over the last 40 years, um, we have used Google Earth Engine because this allows us to not download the data. But because we are so interested in a specific topic like sand mining along the river, I think it's better to uh, download the whole image. Um, okay. Ah, another thing uh, we can do waiting for this um, copying. Um, we work in QGIS, so it's good because it's free. Uh, but we will need a plugin. I don't know if you have already. It's called a semi automatic classification plugin. Um, there is a good tutorial um, on internet, a um, lot of documentation available, um, so it's quite good. Um, we are going to use just a, a very limited set of function. Um, uh, um, just to show you, so this is the image essentially is a zip file. Once we unzip the file, we will got this uh, a folder like this, where we can see here. Um, what I will do is I will stop because, yeah, twenty. Okay, let's wait. Let's see what. They, um, so the naming com there is a, a criteria for the naming convention. So this is telling us is Sentinel two A because there are two satellites, Sentinel two A two B. This is um, as I don't remember multi spectral probably image, and then level one C. This is important because this is the top of atmosphere essentially data. Um, Ortho rectified product. It's everything on the website. This is the date. So we are actually, we downloaded the October 2015, but uh, I already have downloaded before the 9 of April, 2018. This is the time of acquisition. So when it started acquiring, um, don't worry, it looks like it's three in the night, but it's referring to, um, is not the local time, okay? Uh, and these are just the tile information essentially. Um, so you will know that this area um, is always covered annoying by these tiles, but I mean, doesn't matter now. If we open it, um, there are all this information like auxiliary data, which is interesting because auxiliary data contain information on uh, sun elevation and, and it's important because these are information, we don't need to explore all of this file individually, yeah? but these are important to do um, the transformation we are going to do later, I will show you. Uh, but if you just to want to visualize the image, like a quick one, um, you essentially, you go in this folder called a granule. You see there is this folder, image, image data, and then uh, these are folder I created, so I will delete uh, later on, okay? Um, because these are output we are going to create by ourselves. But essentially, you see, uh, you know that Sentinel-2 is a 13 bands multispectral data. You can see 12 bands here because they replicated band 8 and 8A, eight uh, just because this is um, the near infrared, uh, they made a band 8a uh, just to be consistent with the wavelength of Landsat 8. So if you want to do a multi-temporal 
analysis would be easier to use this. Um, but in addition to the, and you can see each of these band, they have like 130, um, uh, 30 megabyte, the different uh, size because the resolution is different. So band two, three and four uh, are the optical one. Indeed, they are the largest. Also eight, uh, the near infrared, uh, um, yeah, the near infrared, they have 10 meter resolution. So these are the best band we can use. We can op like, uh, open one of these band in QJS. So you can see, and the format, this is important. This is the digital number. I think the Sentinel 2 data, they have a 16 bit uh, format. It means that the value can range between zero and uh, probably 12,000, I to remember now, but it's still not the reflectance, okay? We can convert, we will do it. Um, we need to do this conversion to reflectance because we have essentially, because Hanoi province is so big, we have, it's covered by two different image. So uh, we need to convert everything reflectance because otherwise we cannot merge the two images together. I will close for the moment. This is Pancho, but this is a 10 meter resolution. Um, I will try to zoom here just to give you the, you see it's, uh, yes. Mm. Um, but just to have a, a quick view, um, there is also the true color image. This is interesting because it's already a, the um, it takes already the three bands together. So you can already see uh, in the red, green, and blue. You see here. Um, but of course. Um, I think for us, for the sake of the exercise, we want to do mapping at different time domains. Um, it's important we merge the two image. So um, just to show you, uh, this is, okay, I will open again, sorry. This is one image. This is the second one. Again, it's 2018. You merge two, two images yeah. from two shots? 2000, yeah, they are a, a two image uh, you can see here. Yeah. Um, so if I upload the Google route, just to... Okay. So you see, unfortunately, um, it's in the middle, the province of these yeah. two image. They actually overlap in part here. Okay. For our, um, I mean, if we... Uh, Actually, we could already map um, these mines easily in here, okay? Um, because we have already um, the true color image, but I would prefer to do um, a proper merging. I will show you how. Um, but for example, if you want to do a quick analysis, you can easily essentially, um, okay, create a shape file. So what I did essentially is create a shape file. Of course, will be a polygon. We rename it. Um, and it's slow, okay. Yeah, it's quite slow. Yeah. Um, I call it, and we can call mining, for example, summits. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, we can add other fields, but it's not mandatory. I don't know, it's why it's slow. Yeah, I think you're downloading the, the, yeah, the, the, the image data. I will cancel here for the moment. Um, and we are going back here. So essentially, you see, I created this polygonal shape file. Uh, I can click OK. And then you see, uh, I can start essentially writing. So um, now it's just for the example, OK? So let's say this is a mine. Oh, actually, let's go. Probably there are 
quite a few along the river. Um, uh, let's see, we find a mine somewhere. Um, I'm just drawing here. Okay, let's say we are, um, uh, we think this is a mine. What we can do is uh, just start drawing, clicking on it, you see? Mm. With the limit to the area. Yeah, okay. And then once we are happy, uh, I think we, yeah, we write, ah, oh, no, sorry, sorry. I was using the measure, pro sorry. So um, mining site. I click on the uh, drawings here. Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, let me see. Uh, I'm not sure. Ah, the polygon, probably it's this thing. Sorry. I'm not sure because I usually do an arc map, arc GIS this. So let's, let's draw this polygon. Okay. So once I click, uh, once I'm happy with the drawing, I, with the mouse, the right click, and then it will add the ID because of course each of these polygon will have a unique ID. I just type one and that's it. Hmm? And I can do the same for, oh, let's say this is another mine, okay. And again, right click, I will let you. So you will start now, uh, see in the attribute table, two objects. Um, once we are happy, you just uh, click on this. So we now exit the editing tool and we just save it. Um, and that is how it works. Um, and we can do straight away on this true color image. You see there is a big mine, probably construction sites here. Um, another, because we are here, it's better we also uh, consider the other option um, which is essentially merging these two. Uh, how to merge um, is essentially we use once we, uh, I told you there is this plugin, I already installed it, but you simply, um, you search for the plugin you want to install. It's called semi-automatic and you can see. Hmm? Once you download it, you will see this um in the tab it will appear this symbol you can essentially expand and you can see here um, uh, the windows from this uh, plugin one thing we have to do is copying all the bands individually now um so i will just remove everything we don't need for the moment um so um, is essential. These are J, they are called a JP two, but actually they are like TIFF files. I will just need the 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 bands, so I don't download the true color image. Hmm? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I will just reduce. Um, so the first thing we have to do, because we have to merge two image acquired by different time for the same, almost uh, same, um, nearby areas. So we download the old image from this, uh, all the bands from this image. We just now, you see single band list now, we need to update, refresh, and we will see now all the bands. What I will do is now I will select all these buttons, not Google Road, of course, and we'll add here to this band list. So now um, we have to indicate essential, and you can see there are, uh, sometimes it can happen that there is this silly error. So essentially band 8A should go straight below band 8. Uh, we have these two 13 uh, bands, uh, we need now to select the sensor. So there are already a set of sensor, uh, lens art, uh, eh? but there is also what we need here. You see Sentinel-2. So now we automatically uh, give the center of the bands. Okay. Uh, one thing is um, 
we need to do is essentially ban one, sorry, should not be considered uh, because you see once just ban two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 11 and 12. So I will remove this. It automatically gives the center wavelength of the blue. Okay, we don't need this. We actually, so I remove just this, uh, sorry. <laughs> you <move on. laughs> um, so we just need, you see, also band nine and 10, we don't need. And yeah, we need everything else. You see automatically give center wavelength like a number without any sense at the moment. We will select again, send, ah, it doesn't work. So we have to go select a random tensor and then going back again to Sentinel-2. So you see now we have like the proper bands um, and you can see this range, these are the red, green, blue, green, and red. And then we have the short wave infrared and so on. We have now a band, a band set one. Um, we can already create just for the sake of uh, visualization. Uh, you can see we can create a virtual band uh, just to visualize it. It can take some time because we are working with um, three raster image together. But essentially, this is to uh, visualize yeah, this band uploaded in band set one. Um, so it should appear like a virtual, uh, if you give me some second, let me know if you have question. Huh? Um, <laughs> let's be patient now sometimes. Um, no, I need to wait. I cannot do anything. <laughs> Ah, so you see, you have, um, I already create, I uploaded this band in a band set. So it create this virtual uh, layer. And you could see you have this virtual band set you can visualize already, uh, but we don't need at the moment. So essentially the, the step we need to do now is after we upload these bands is transforming to reflectance Okay, value, so value between zero and one, which can then be compared to the other image because we will do the same for the other image. And then we will um, um, clip, uh, um, yeah, we will clip, uh, um, clip following the annoy province boundary. And finally, we will do the same for the second image, the southernmost image, and then we will merge the two. So. Um, we have this band name. Um, first thing is transforming to um, top of atmosphere reflectance. You see here, you are already all the predefined sensor. We need Sentinel 2. Now, what he's asking, you see, directory containing Sentinel 2 bands. So we are going to uh, that folder I mentioned you at the beginning. So if you go, this is the folder. Call it safe. I go in granule. There is only one folder. Yeah, image data. And this is the folder, okay? It's called an image data. Because if you see from here, this is where I uploaded all the image. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So I said, I just select the data, uh, the folder, sorry. Select folder. He automatically, okay, found. Uh, the bands, um, we now need to select the metadata. Where is the metadata? The metadata is essentially back. It's uh, this file here, metadata. You see, it's in at the beginning, essentially. Once you open the safe folder, it's here. Hmm? Um, so, ah. Uh, be careful, I, I was doing an error already. This is the image T48 QWJ. Um, I was uploading the bands from QWH, which is the other. 
Um, so you see QWJ, the second one. This is the folder with the bands. Now, again, the, you see the metadata, it gave you already this int, it's called MTD underscore MSI. Um, the file is at the beginning. So we open the save folder, you see here, this is, you just need to click. And that's it. You see now you have already the solar irradiance quantification, but this is a scaling value actually. And this is it. Once we do it, um, once we do run, essentially he asks you where you want to save. We need to select a directory, okay, where to save this information. Hmm? Once we select, it will run automatically. It can take some minutes, probably five to 10 minutes. Um, so I'm not going to run because actually, um, I have run it already. Um, so if you see, um, that was cool. Okay. Cool. WJ. This is a folder. You see reflectance is a folder I created and there are all the bands. Um, let me just display by type. Um, so now, if you see the value, they are between zero and one. So that's it. It's you don't have to do anything. You just select the uh, the folder where the bands are, plus the metadata information. That's it. Then you automatically do all the conversion. Okay. One things we need to do now, um, and is essentially. Um, what I've done already here, um, if I open, for example, just to give you an idea. Um, so for example, this was the original bands, Banchu. Um, you can see Banchu has a value at the beginning between 800, this is just the digital number and 6,000. And now it's between zero and one. Okay. This is now the top of atmosphere. Um, I have also, so once we created this file, um, what we have to do is um, going back to the band set and clear what we have before. Because you see, uh, here we still have the old band list we have uh, uploaded before. Now we have to refresh here. And we have the reflectance, you see. Um, I recall that these are, uh, they are actually automatically renamed RT reflectance. So you cannot get confused. Uh, I need to delete here the, the previous spans. Um, and this is it. One other things I've done is make a clip. Um, and now I need to go. So essentially, so first step is um, converting to reflectance. Second step, but probably it is not mandatory, yeah. Um, but it's what I did is clipping um, to the annoy uh, border. Uh, so I will one. I upload. I will upload. You see the boundary of annoy. Okay, these are in GTM is important because in QJS especially, you, you will not be able to do an operation if the two data set have different reference system uh, and Sentinel-2 data are in UTM, okay. Um, so what I did is we have the reflectance, um, uh, another, but if you see the original data, um, you see the original data, I just took a random bands here. Um, you see, they, of course, they don't follow the annoy boundary. Um, so the second step I did after this reflectance, 
um, is mm, was to do a clip. So in that case, I would select again all the buns and upload here. Again, it will give you, uh, you have to select the sensor again. Um, what I will do is, I don't know why, don't ask me why, the center wavelength is just one, two, three at the beginning. So I select a random, if I select again, Sentinel-2 doesn't work. So I need to select any random and then going back to Sentinel-2. So we have now the proper wavelength. Uh, another part of pre-processing is the clip. This is useful because this is an operation you could do normally in QGIS or ArcGIS, but will take time. So you essentially, you select the input band set. So all this band here, you see it's called a band set one. Uh, so take all these 10 bands in this case, because if you remember, we didn't upload band one, band nine and 10. So they are just 10. And we do a clip uh, using, if I refresh here, the, the annoy boundary. So after the reflectance, I made a clip. And again, once I do run, um, um, I need to um, select where to save. I will save in this training folder, um, but I have done already, but just to show you how it works, it should hopefully not take a long time. So once I select the folder, okay. Mm. I think, yeah, um, I don't know if it worked or not, we can check. Okay, probably you know why it didn't work because it's already clipped. Hmm? But this is the, the other step, okay. Um, you select the band step here. Um, you create this band set one, you do a clip. It's not mandatory as I told you because actually it's reducing your area because um, essentially from this area of interest, you will get uh, this one, okay? Again, there is this missing bit, huh? and this is why I want to do the merging. Um, so this is essentially, I will remove this. These, we can group together um, in, uh, you see, T48 QWJ. It's good. Okay. We can upload the other image. So we have to do again the same for the other. I have already done, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so you see. Um, I need to bring out. Okay. T forty eight. So if so, essentially we have now the two bits. You see, this is the issue. Um, for this, I have always tell you if you have to compare different image even acquired the same day, but um, over different footprint. Um, of course, we are comparing now, if we compare, for example, band six with band six, you could see, okay. To be honest, this issue, uh, you can see the difference just because it's a different interval, okay? Because they are different raster essentially. So what we can do uh, to overcome this problem, again, sorry if I repeat myself, we do the top of atmosphere conversion, we do the clipping, finally, uh, individually for each, these two images, um, and then uh, is the merging option. So the merging is essentially, uh, we need to download, we already have downloaded this QWJ, we need to upload and uh, I refresh it here. 
the other uh, band set. So I will, you see, this is band set one. I will create a new band set by clicking here, band set two. Now I will upload the other image. So the QWH. Um, I will upload here. Again, you see, you have this silly issue. So I will just click on Modis and then again on Sentinel. Now I have the bands. Um, so now I have the two bands set. What I can do is, um, where is, where is? Ah. Is essentially doing a mosaic. So this is the last step I made, uh, mosaic band set. And probably we can do this. So essentially ask which band set you want to merge, one and two, which are the two image here. Um, and that's it. Then it will create a output with the name at the beginning, which will be mosaic. So you see here, RT clip, they are the name that automatically QGIS add, this plugin add. So if I start um, clipping here, um, probably this time should work. So I select this folder training. Now it will start working on it. So now I cannot do anything. I hope it's going. And you will start to see appearing here, you see the mosaic head. So it's working now in the background. Hmm? And that's it. So that, now of course I cannot do anymore because it's working. Uh, but this is how it works. It will create this um, unique mosaic for Android province. And then we can map, as I show you, just drawing polygons. Um, so um, what we can do if you want is we can go um, in details of the sand mining mapping. Um, another day, I have a meeting in 10 minutes, but uh, if you are happy, uh, I will share the presentation. Um, if we, if you want to do another um, part, the second part on the mapping itself, we can do it. It's up to you. I will just uh, stop sharing and stop recording.